Thanks for tuning in to, to New Channel 12 Live at 1. I'm Alec Jesse. And I'm Katie Cook. Kentucky State Troopers were called to investigate a shooting in Scottsville this past weekend. Reporter Harrison Valk traveled to the scene to find out the latest on the incident. On March 16th at 10.30 at night, Kentucky State Police were dispatched to assist Scottsville Police in a shooting investigation at North 3rd Street. Me and my son was in my living room and uh, I was uh, kind of half in and half out on the couch and watching TV. And, uh, He's sitting in the recliner beside of me, and he woke me up and said, Daddy, I heard gunshots. The two victims were 21-year-olds Charles Hopewell and Alicia Rodriguez. Both were transported from the scene to Nashville and treated for their injuries. One was treated and released. The other party uh, succumbed to her injuries the next day at Vanderbilt University Hospital in Nashville. Because the shooting happened at night, there's a lot of evidence the investigators had to wait and get, including forensic and digital evidence to access cell phones and social media. The investigators believe that the house was targeted specifically, but it does not bring any danger to the neighbors or the public of Allen County. But it does raise concern. Big concern because they've not talked to the people that did it yet, but I will say they're doing a good job trying to. But uh, yeah, it's a big concern. Police say an autopsy will also be conducted, and they are awaiting approval on search warrants, which will help bring further evidence in the case. It is an open and active investigation, and our detectives are uh, working around the clock right now to try to bring this thing to a close. Reporting for News Channel 12, I'm Harrison Volk. If you or someone you know has any information on the shooting, you can contact the Kentucky State Police Department at 270-782-2010. A chunk of change, a handful of suspects, and a whole heap of trouble. Authorities in Kentucky recovered nearly $1,500 in quarters. They say were stolen from coin-operated air pumps. Five people are facing charges in a spate of air pump robberies going back months. The, corn ca the coin caper came to an end Sunday when police say they saw a man taking money from a gas station air machine. Officers say when they pulled the man and his girlfriend over, $10 in quarters fell out of the man's lap. A vehicle search turned up hundreds of more in dollars of change plus a stolen license plate and tools. The ensuing investigation led authorities to charge three additional suspects. New signs across Bowling Green are addressing an increase in panhandling. Reporter Natalie Turner spoke with the members of the homeless community to get their responses to the signs. Maybe you've seen them here. Maybe you've seen them here. Or maybe you've seen this woman, whom we'll call Jane. All they see is people on these corners holding signs. They don't go beneath that to see they're, we're actually still human. We're actually still people, and a lot of us do have good hearts. Jane is pregnant, and for about half a year now, she's relied mostly on panhandling to get by. I mean, I use the money to survive every day. But new signs popping up around Bowling Green could affect homeless people like Jane. The words on signs like the one behind me are clear. Change the way you give. Panhandling is not safe. But what's the message behind them? Public Works Director Greg Meredith says the signs are meant to help homeless people better, not less. The room at the end, the Salvation Army and Hotel Inc. And we think organizations that, that have a, a plan and a mechanism and a, you know, they know how to get people the help that they need. And again, the, the whole thing with panhandling is not everyone is homeless. Some people do that for an extra income, believe it or not. And when people present themselves as homeless, charitable citizens aren't the only ones getting burnt. Because they're taking advantage of the only help that some people can get. Jane thinks the signs send mixed signals to people who want to help. A lot of people have stopped helping. And it's hard because sometimes you can go two, three days without eating, two, three days without showering, two, three days without even anywhere warm to sleep. A lot of people will drive past and say, get a job. Well, if you understood or took the time out to know my story, I just need help. For News Channel 12, I'm Natalie Turner. Those interested in giving back to the homeless can visit bgky.org slash give dash effectively. And now Matthew Wine joins us with a first look at our forecast. Okay, Matthew, it looks like spring has finally sprung. Please tell me this sunshine is here to stay. You know, we had a rough start to the year with a whole lot of cold. I had a rough start at the beginning of the show, but you know what? Not a rough start this time around. It's the start of this weekend. Lots of abundant sunshine, 59 degrees. That will be on the increase just a couple more degrees later on today. Dew point at 36, so humidity is only at 
it's just a fantastic day to be alive. The only thing that you could possibly complain about today would be the winds out of the west northwest at 10 miles per hour. And it will be pretty gusty today, gusts of upwards of 25 miles per hour around the region. Same thing as we're seeing here, 59 Bowling Green, 59 Nashville, Louisville at 57. The only problems you might have is the further north you go, sitting in the upper 40s near Cincinnati and Bloomington, Indiana. So as I stated already, perfect start to the weekend. However, that will be changing quickly as we get later on into Sunday and then on into Monday as rain starts to move in. But after the rain clears out, I just want to remind you guys, dress a little warm in the morning, but you can take off that jacket. Cold mornings, mild days. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Matthew. Coming up on News Channel 12, we have the latest on the governor's surprising take on vaccinations. And is in-store shopping being taken over by online markets? I'll have more on why some local stores may be going out of business. Coming up. For tuning in to News Channel 12 Live at 1, I'm Temple Rickey. And I'm Ryan Southers. Police are still investigating a shooting that took place at Chocolate City Nightclub on Scott Street Sunday morning, leaving one man in the hospital. Officials say the suspect fled the scene after the incident. If you have seen this man, please contact the Bowling Green Police as soon as possible. A student is recovering after being stabbed by one of their classmates at an Eastern Kentucky school. Principal Noel Crum confirmed the altercation took place at Johnson County Central High School. Crum said they transported the injured student to an area hospital while police took the suspect into custody. The victims remained conscious while being transported and no other students were threatened in the event. Superintendent Tom Cochran says the school takes precautionary measures to prevent incidents of violence on campus. We have a security guard stationed at, at our entrances and we, our administrators and our teachers are always in the halls. A routine court hearing took a dramatic turn when the suspect tried to make a run for it. David Mattingly reports how his day in court went from bad to worse in a matter of seconds. Derek Wright was definitely wrong when he thought a case against him for wanton endangerment and domestic violence had been dropped. That's him in the red jacket in Jefferson District Court when he got the bad news. He was going to jail. Wait, sir, you need to calm down, okay? They're going to go ahead. They're going to execute this. They'll let you take some time to call your mom. But Wright never made that phone call. Watch what happens next. Wright tries to make a run for it. A deputy brings him down in just three seconds. But Wright won't stop fighting. And that's when things get worse. Danger, danger. Oh, oh, stop, stop. Wright is now facing additional charges of third degree assault, resisting arrest, criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he believes the women of Alabama Republican state, he believes the women over the Alabama Republican state nominee Roy Moore. Moore is accused of pursuing relationships with teenage women while in his 30s. However, Moore denied any wrongdoing. McConnell says it's time for Moore to step down. I did. I think he should step aside. Are you encouraging a write in campaign with Senator Strange? That, that's an option we're looking at. Uh, whether or not there is someone who could mount a write-in campaign successfully. Would it be Senator Strange, do you think? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. We're just about out of is, is the no. burden on Moore to prove these false versus someone to prove that these are true in this situation? Or do you believe these allegations to be true? I believe the women, yes. An armed Kentucky man says he stopped a possible home intrusion with warning shots and his 150-pound dog. Gilbert Corsi recounted the incident with the homeowner. 
One says, never mind the dog, beware of the owner. <laughs> and it has a, a, a gun. The signs didn't keep a stranger away from Derek Thomas's driveway. Yeah, he was up to no good. <laughs> Definitely. Saturday night, Thomas noticed a shadow lurking outside his Pendleton Road home. He was locking up after watching a late night football game. And I saw him come from here. He grabbed this handle. He grabbed that door handle. His wife and three kids, ages three, seven, and nine, all asleep inside. So he went out barefoot. I pulled my gun and said, what the hell are you doing in my truck? Get out of my truck and crawl back out of the truck and basically tried to crawl around the back. He did stand up, but when I shot the gun two times, he got down onto the ground and stayed. Thomas says he stopped the stranger before anything was taken, then told his wife to call 911 and bring out backup, the family's great Dane named Tank. Started barking going crazy. I said, you hear that? That's my 150 pound dog and I promise you if you run, I'm not chasing you, but he's going to catch you. Thomas posted the pictures of Matthew Conklin's arrest to Facebook, saying he was carrying 3,500 bucks cash. Police say they found cap needles, heroin, and a small bag of suspected meth in his pockets. My goodness gracious. Court records say Conklin offered cops the cash not to take him to jail. The 25-year-old has a history of drug convictions and was due in court Wednesday to be sentenced on another drug case. I'm afraid to let you out of jail because you may very well kill yourself. All you have to do is run into a bad batch of dope and you're dead. No regrets from Thomas. Heart adrenaline pounding a mile a minute. Man and man's best friend protecting their home. I work every day hard for my money and it makes me upset, you know, that somebody's out here in my stuff, stealing my stuff. Conklin pleaded not guilty to drug trafficking charges, trespassing, and bribery at his arraignment Monday morning. Authorities were still holding him in jail on a $10,000 bond as of Monday evening. Austin Burks now joins us for the first look at our forecast. What's it looking like out there today, Austin? Well, this morning we woke up to some dreary skies. We had some fog and some chilly temperatures, but that quickly changed because we are currently at 55 degrees right now with a south-southeast wind at 5 miles per hour. And we take a look across the region. We have 55 degrees here in Bowling Green. We have 47 in Louisville, 55 in London. We have 61 in Knoxville and 57 in Nashville. And we can see those temperatures slightly go up to the upper 50s and the lower 60s for the rest of the day. And we have big changes coming up this weekend. As we have a look at our weather highlights, we have currently, or our weather highlights, we have winds on the increase tonight and to tomorrow. The middle Tennessee State game versus Western Kentucky is looking fantastic, and I'll have that here in just a second. And the storm chances on Saturday, we have a possible chance for some strong storms and some severe weather. And I'll have that all here in just a few minutes. Hilltopper. Thanks, Austin. Coming up on News Channel 12 Live at 1, we'll share how the Bowling Green community and the Salvation Army is partnering together for this Thanksgiving. And Caroline Ford joins us to share how to stay fit during the Thanksgiving holidays. to the 2018 edition of the Extra Point Game Day Special. I'm Zach McGovern, joined by Katie Cook, Nathan Yazdani, and Lauren McCourt. Well, guys, it's, it's a little cloudy, but at least, uh, cloudy, at least it's not raining, though, right? Yeah, I can deal with some clouds as long as there no, there's no rain. It looks like people are starting to file in, some cornhole going. There's even a band over there playing. Yeah, I think tonight we're going to actually have a good crowd for tonight's game. Well, they said it all, so let's, let, let's get it, let's go. Let's start the show. The Hilltopper football team looked to get their first conference win of the year last, weekend, last week against Old Dominion after dropping their first two conference games of the season. Both teams went blow for blow in the first two quarters with the score tied for most of the half. Davis Shanley broke the deadlock with a last minute drive ending in a 15 yard dot to Kyle Fortenberry. Both defenses stepped it up and locked each other down for most of the second half. Then Geno Appleberry Jr. punched in a two yard run to put WKU up by seven with a minute and a half left. The Monarchs responded with a Blake LaRusa dime to Travis Fulgham for a touchdown with mere seconds on the clock. ODU returned a short WKU field goal attempt, set up the game-winning field goal for the Monarchs. They went on to win 37 to 34. You gotta win, win the football game. We gave ourselves a chance to win. Now, you can always look to every single uh, play in the game. Uh, you know, there's, there's third down conversions that we had, and we didn't, we didn't, make, we didn't, we didn't convert them. That, that I think would have made a big difference. 
Joining, joining us live on set now is Director of Athletics Todd Stewart. During his six years at Western Kentucky University, 518 student athletes have attained their degrees. The Hilltoppers had captured 33 conference championships, multiple NCAA tournament appearances, including an NIT appearance, appearance. And thank you for joining us today. It is our honor. Now, Todd, this is your sixth year at, at being an athletic director at WKU. What is your best memory about homecoming? I think just the excitement of people coming back to campus that haven't been here in a while and, and seeing friends that they went to school with and then what we feel our responsibility is to put a show on for them on the football field. And uh, it's your sixth homecoming here on the Hill. You know, wh what's been your favorite part of the game day experience and how has it evolved over your time here? Well, I mean, this year, you know, we've struggled a little bit with our record, but I think what's changed the most since I've been here is just the, the overall excitement of football, the way the crowds have grown and you know the, obviously the team success I mean from 2014 to 2016 winning a bowl game each of those three years and winning the conference championship twice you know I think just elevated the program to a level it probably had never been at. And, and now Todd with a with a young group in the in the Hilltopper football team and not maybe not the season that everybody was hoping for but what do you see moving forward with them? Well what's happening this year I mean certainly one and six is, is not you know what we're used to it's it, it is who we are right now which we don't like I don't believe it will be who we are moving forward we are getting a lot of young guys experience we have a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing and what we all feel will happen is that eventually the experience they're getting will translate to wins right and you, you know a lot of these losses are, are coming in the fourth quarter after you know some really good play by the top so what might be some misconceptions that, that the fans might have uh, with a team so far this year what are some things to look forward to uh, with this season well, I, I think, you know, we've all been spoiled by the success we've had, but I think if people look at, you know, we have a freshman quarterback and two freshman running backs who, you know, a year or two ago were in high school, and, and now they're starting and playing key roles, and I think as this season's going on, you know, you and I'm talking about Davis Shanley, Geno Appleberry, and Josh Samuel, you know, as this season's going on, you've just seen their production go up seemingly on a weekly basis. Right. I want to switch it over to basketball for yeah. a little bit. And Good. speaking of those crowds, um, you sold out Diddle Arena for this season. What does that say about our basketball team this year? Well, I, I think it just shows the amount of excitement that everybody has. I, you know, I think Rick Stansberry, the two years he's been here, has just been relentless about building our program. Certainly the team we had last year that won 27 games, I think really captured the, the fans' attention. And people liked how well they played together and how hard they played. And, you know, we lost some guys off of that team, but we have an excellent recruiting class. And, you know, the fans, I think, got attached to, to WKU basketball last year in a way that they hadn't in a while, and it's carried over to this season, and uh, certainly we're happy about that. It should be a very exciting year. Yeah, um, I was lucky to meet Sansbury at Hilltopper Hysteria, and there's just nothing like the energy he brings to that Relentless team. is the word I would use. I mean, yeah. He's just relentless, and he's just done a phenomenal job with our program. Now, right. Todd, in the past, it seems like WKU's always been a basketball school, and then we get, we had those few years of, of WKU football really you know, winning those conference championships, going to multiple bowl games. Do you believe we're a basketball school again, or are we still a football school? Well, the, what, my answer to that is I think we're everything. You know, that, at least that's what our goal is to be. I don't think we have to choose. Uh, I don't think the expense of one, there's, or I'm sorry, the success of one has to come at the expense of another. One of my sayings is a rising tide lifts all boats. And, and I think anytime you succeed in anything, it's a good thing. Ultimately, what I'd like to have is a year where, for everybody's sake, we have an eight- or nine-month period where football is, is great and, and winning a championship and, and it goes over to basketball and it's the same way and everybody on campus rides that way for a whole year that's what we're shooting for and you know we have new video boards new sound systems now for both WKU basketball and football so the excitement around the whole WKU athletic program is really starting to rise right now you know is, is there anything else you guys got in the works just to you know elevate that that game day and that game experience for the fans well those are those are huge additions I really believe that they will revolutionize the, the experience for fans because anymore you know if the best place to watch a sporting event is at home. You're on your couch, it's comfortable, you control your climate, you've got your own refrigerator, your own restroom. So what we have to do is, is make the, the atmosphere at our venues as good as possible. And I think those high definition boards, we actually, uh, it was all private money. We fundraised that two and a half million dollars for the, the two boards in Ditto Arena and the board in Houchin Smith Stadium. And I think the clarity of that, coupled with the new sound system, will make the, the fan experience in those two venues the best they've ever been. And any you know, any you, works in anything else you have planned on campus to be built? Well, it's the 100th year this year, not, not really anything to be built per se, but it's the 100th year this year for football, which we have been celebrating for men's basketball and for baseball. So it's kind of unusual to have all three of those, you know, the 100th season at the same time. So we'll really be celebrating that 100-year theme all year long. 
And one quick last question, you know, over your time on the Hill, what's been your favorite WKU athletics memory so far? You know, it's a hard question because there's been a lot, but but I would say, you know, what really stands out is when we've had postseason success. So, so I think the football team winning bowl games, our volleyball team winning NCAA tournament matches, like last year we swept Notre Dame in the NCAA tournament. Our softball team a few years ago beat North Carolina and Georgia. I think when you make postseason play and then you, you succeed against perceived larger programs, that just does an incredible amount of uh, – just brings so much positive publicity and, and a vibe to your programs. Right, that energy just you know makes campus so much more fun and just makes things so uh, athletic events so much more exciting. But that's all the time we're gonna have for you today. You know, it's been a pleasure having you on, and we just wanted to uh, you know thank you for coming on with giving you uh, this extra point hat so you can awesome. rep the show. You know, when you're walking around on campus. So uh, thank you very much, Fantastic. Todd. Fantastic. This will give me a little extra bounce in my step. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time out of your game day to talk with us. We wanted to give you the special extra point hat as a token of our gratitude and good luck to you and uh, the rest of WKU athletics going on this season. Thank you. Great being with you. Now we send it to our field reporter Carly Hudson who is at LT Smith Stadium. Well we're looking forward to an interesting homecoming matchup today between the WKU Hilltopper football team as they battle against the FIU Panthers. FIU is coming into this game with a lot of success in their season already especially for Conference USA. They are currently defensively and offensively both doing very well. Their defense with the most sacks and the second most interceptions in Conference USA. FIU is also third in rushing yards for Conference USA and only one point away per game from averaging the most points per game in Conference USA. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting dynamic today. Ready to see what both teams have to bring to the field. Back to you guys. Thanks Carly. WKU football is in the midst of their 100th season in program history. Reporter Miles Schroeder got the chance to find out just what the Topper tradition is all about. In recent years, WKU football fans have been blessed with playing in bowl games in five of the past six seasons. But many fans don't realize how far back the history of this team really goes. Although fans call Smith Stadium home today, the original home of the Hilltoppers was the Bowling Green Fairgrounds. But when LT Smith took over as athletic director, all that changed. They, they decided it was time we had our sta a stadium of our own. So they, uh, they took, scooped out an old rock quarry that was hanging on the south end of campus. But look, what a beautiful setting up there on the hill and the view. Uh, it was, it was, it was quite, quite, a, quite a wonderful location. The, that was the home of Hilltopper football from 1927 to 1968. Although he's known more for basketball, Edgar Allen Diddle took over the football team in the 1920s and because there were rules against players talking to the coaches on the sideline, he began to use a towel to signal plays for the guys out on the field. The towel started out as a hidden symbol for different plays, but it has turned into a historical symbol for everyone who steps foot on the campus of WKU. It came through our history as part of our DNA and it wasn't contrived, it wasn't made up. It, it naturally became the symbol of our spirit and our determination and, and, our, and, our, and our achievement. So many universities, everybody's trying to create something that makes them special. We didn't have to create that. It evolved naturally. The Tops continued to bring talent on the field even after Diddle decided to focus on basketball and fans saw their first All-American in 1952 in Jimmy Fikes. Like many Hilltopper greats, Fikes' days at WKU didn't end on the field as he would go on to become the winningest and longest tenured coach in WKU football history. Jimmy devoted his adult life to Western Kentucky University. Jimmy was an exceptional individual. Uh, he was very sincere when he used the term that he used often, "My, this is my university. He may have been one of those people that, that the motto, the spirit makes the master fit to a T. Just nine years after Fikes retired, the football team was in danger of being shut down due to budget cuts. But Coach Jack Harbaugh had other plans. He kept the program above 500 for a few seasons, and just a decade later, Topper fans saw their first national football championship in school history. And although the Tops are struggling through their 100th season, WKU saw its best-ranked recruiting class in school history come in this year, and Gary Ransdell thinks that regardless of the record, the one thing that will never die for WKU is the spirit. Uh, and it doesn't go away. You don't turn that off just because you it's time to retire from, from a particular position. Uh, that will always be part of us. It will always be central uh, to, to us, both in our hearts and in our heads. For The Extra Point, I'm Miles Schroeder. WKU will close out their 100th season with games against FIU, FAU, Law Tech, MTSU, and UTEP. Make sure to tune into the Extra Point for highlights from all of those games. 
The sun's not shining, but hey, that's showbiz, baby. Matthew Wine joins us ba from back in the studio to give us the forecast for the big game tonight. Matthew, what can we expect? Lauren, what you're experiencing right now is basically what we're going to be experiencing for your game day forecast. I know it's a little bit gloomy out there. I don't want you guys to let that affect your attitude toward the game. Stay out there as long as possible all the way to the fourth quarter and cheer on our tops. 54 degrees right now outside, cloudy conditions throughout most of the area, and that's the exact reason that we have these low to mid 50s throughout uh, south central Kentucky and into Tennessee. However, the further west you go, it's a little bit warmer, 63 in Jackson, 62 in Paducah, and 59 in Evansville, and they are getting in on some sunshine action. The clouds have moved out. Uh, they were there earlier today. They looked much more like us, but quickly began to warm up as the clouds moved out of the area. Unfortunately for us tonight and today, though, our peak heating has already moved out, and so we won't be warming up. We will only be cooling down later on into the evening. So, cool and cloudy for our game day forecast, but roll tops, baby. Stay out there and cheer them on as much as you can. Warm and breezy for your Sunday afternoon, and that's due to a warm front making its way through our region. So I've, I will talk more about that. It is really good news. Just stay tuned later on in the show. And a great start to your work week. Monday and Tuesday, they look absolutely fantastic. Temperatures still in the 60s and even possibly another 70 degree day on your Tuesday. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Matthew. Coming up next, the Bogota King himself will be joining us on set. And no, I'm not talking about Bill Nye the Science Guy. Stay tuned because WKU President Timothy Caboni will be right here after the break. <laughs> 